What's next? I'll finally pop the big question. Hit the new Barcada goals. Start my next great adventure. Host epic game nights. Invest in a brighter future. Moving to a place we can call our own. We're ready for what's next. In a space that's safe and brings us closer to our dreams. Where it is easy to restart our lives. That gives us security to go for what's next. Your next best move, Avida. Finally pop the big question. Hit the new Barcada goals. Start my next great adventure. Host epic game nights. Invest in a brighter future. Moving to a place we can call our own. We're ready for what's next. In a space that's safe and brings us closer to our dreams. address with an elevated lifestyle at Aberdeen Estates in Valley. There's harmony in urban living at Avida Settings Greenville, Alguera, located in Pampanga. At Patrio Madrigal, life sings to your rhythm, allowing you to live it the way you want to. Live life as you imagine it to be at Avida Towers of Riza, located at Davao City. Visit our website, avidaland.com, to know more. One of the biggest milestones in every person's life is investing in the home of their dreams. To help you achieve this milestone, we at Avida are offering exclusive deals and perks for all our clients. Get as high as 1.8 million pesos cash discount when you reserve an Avida property. Plus, take home these sweet rewards, flat screen TV for the first three housing lot buyers, be coffee machine, Send a hotel overnight staycation for every unit reservation and 30,000 pesos worth of giveaway credits for moving ready units. We also have offerings from our sponsors, Avinson and Zalora. Get e vouchers, discount coupons, and free interior design consultation from Avinson and Avinson Home. Visit their booth located on the site to avail of these discounts. From Zalora, all attendees will get 30% off minimum spend of 2,990.95, maximum discount of 2,000, and a maximum usage of three times per account. Use the promo code Avita Z30. All caps again. That's Avita Z30. Branded category exclusion supply. It's time to take advantage of our exclusive deals and make it home possible with Avita. Now, without further ado, allow me to introduce our guest speaker for today. Mr. Rex Mendoza is the president and CEO of Frankfurt Financials, one of the largest distributors of investment funds in the Philippines. He is an active entrepreneur with companies and endeavors in multiple industries. 
He is the lead independent director of Globe Telecom and Ayala Land Logistics Holding Corporation, an independent director of Ayala Land and National Fee Insurance Corporation, all listed companies in the Philippine Stock Exchange. He is the chairman of Singapore Life Philippines and the Soldiva Funds. He is also a director of Esquire Financing, G Exchange, also known as GXI or GCash, Seedbox Technologies, Seven Tail Trees Event Management, Mobile Group Inc., and many other leading companies in different fields. He is recognized as one of the best business, leadership, finance, marketing, and sales speakers in the country. Rex Mendoza is also a best selling author, financial advisor, and business mentor. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all give a warm welcome to Mr. Rex Mendoza. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is the first over two years, and that's the energy you have. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I don't know if, like me, you're really very excited. I mean, this is the first time that we're doing something like this. I mean, on my end, right? In over two years, physically being here, presenting to people, and. That's the reason why I can say simply good afternoon. Because we are streaming in 18 other areas where a villa is. On top of that, we're with Bill Star. And we're also being watched by a lot of people all over the world. So, good evening, good morning. Right? And it's really exciting because. Many of you are here because you're going to be possibly, and I say possibly, try to consider and make your next best move. Making your next best move in the area of investments requires that it's correct. Not only at this time, but also in the future. That is key to making investments. It's not making them and thinking about how they'll work over the course of a few years. Especially with investments that go over the long term, they get to impact our lives in many different ways. The key to understanding where we are today is understanding that hey, we're moving from a pandemic to an endemic and there is enough proof that that's happening. Is that the signal for us to change our attitude towards making commitments, not only for partners and relationships, but for investments. As I say that, I'm just being practical. Now is the best, yet the hardest time to consider investing. It is made difficult by what we call black swans. And we have a very big black swan in the COVID pandemic. But as we're simmering down with that black swan, guess what happens? Other swans begin to follow. They begin to follow like the Ukraine-Russia war, the explosion of the Angle King. Baka may hindi na black yung swan na yun White na rin sila. And we can say they happen again and again and again. So what do we do about it? But you see, the major one is this. And because we will have to contend with reality, we also have to consider that, hey, investing has to have a different perspective. Investing has to nurture a different kind of attitude and perspective amongst all of us. When economic growth is slow and negative, Markets are weak. It's when most people worry about losing money. And they miss out the opportunities. They disregard the risk of missing opportunities. Missing opportunities is also risk. And as I will contend with this entire talk, it's all about the idea of successful investing. And successful investing is not about avoiding risk. It's about managing it. 
And clearly, we have to start with maybe a bit of knowledge and understanding and appreciation of what's really happening. Is it really the end of this pandemic? Are we really saying that it is ending? You know, you've heard that there is a new variant in the UK, right? But those are variants also of the Omicron. And that just means that vaccinations over it. You know, for most part, last year, only a few months ago, we are the worst, one of the worst in Asia, and maybe globally. And then all of a sudden, without you knowing it, without press coverage, we're one of the best. In just a few months, we turned from the worst country responding to a pandemic to somehow one of the best. It's because we got schooled, right? Delta and Omicron pushed us to be so conscious and worry about this virus. What did we do? We all lined up to be vaccinated. We all lined up to even get the booster shot. Countries, places like Hong Kong, they did not get the infections. They were so tight that they actually got what? A surge, they defined it as a surge with 25 to 30 infections. Search to your name. Di ba? Sa atin, sa isang village lang yun. Sa isang village lang yun. So, we got scared we had our vaccinations. Unfortunately, Hong Kong did not. And when Omicron hit, the search for them, knowing that Omicron is airborne, the search for them is totally, totally different. But even Omicron hit us, it did. You remember? One day, 39,000. That was the peak. Naniniwala pa kayo 39,000. No? That's not 39,000. That's over 100,000. And why am I saying that? Because people did not test themselves anymore. Some of them tested themselves using the antigen test, and they did not report themselves. Quite frankly, some people even say, Yung tama ng Omicron is even lighter than yung tama ng third dose. You remember that? When you got your booster shot, a lot of people missed out on like a day or two. They were sidelined. But the people who got Omicron just got a cold and a slight fever for about a day or two as well. So technically, we are in good shape. And the hospitals are closing their COVID wards. Because those are losing money. There is enough to tell you that the problematic bed capacity that we're talking about is a thing of the past. And the vaccinations are continuing. We're now dealing with the younger crop because they are going to be the ones at risk. When we talk about COVID moving forward, once it turns into this endemic and that endemic ending and being lost, but Avengers, no? Then we can be. How at risk talaga would be the people 65 years old and older, people with comorbidities, and children. But as we have coverages for them, as we have vaccinations for them, they will also be a thing of the past. The thing about it is that I'm an investment professional and I get to tell people somehow. We got worried about consumption in the Philippines. We got worried about, you know, how are people going to spend and consume when we have a pandemic? So we get to study it. This is 2021 until the third quarter. As a percentage of 2019, what was glaring? You know, except for those four at the top, if you're going to be looking at this, as a population, we've been spending more than pre-pandemic levels. And this is the very reason why companies here, companies that are in the Philippine Stock Exchange Index, they were projected to earn about 30%. Recovery from 21, no, sorry, recovery from 2020 moving into 2021. The projection was they're going to be doing what? Plus 30%. The 
thanks a turnaround. And because of the Filipino consuming and realizing that demand is there, it's just demand character that changed. Let me repeat that. Demand was there. It's demand character that changed. Even with the Ayala Mosque, for example. Foot traffic in the mall has gone up back to about 80% of pre-pandemic levels. Average you. Pagdating dun sa luxury lane, that new lane where you see LV and Dior, the foot traffic is what? Over 100% from pre-pandemic levels. So talaga gumagas to sila. And I'll tell you, the results show it. Out of all the companies in the Philippine Stock Exchange Index, 88% have reported. Guess what? The average growth of earnings would be. It's 47%. It's 47%. And the prices are not showing in the exchange because of negative sentiment. Alam niyo, Pinoy, nahuhuli yung emotion. Pag tumapang tayo, lahat yan babalik. But the thing is, fundamentally, companies are doing well. I'm not gonna say there will be no headwinds. There will be headwinds. We have other new concerns, but with the way things are going, it's fundamentally healthy. And when things turn around and we make our investments happen, it might be too late. We're not going to see those promos, those freebies, and those discounts. Those will end. And that's the reason why making that decision is not actually just looking at the decision itself. It's the timing of that decision. And that's the reason why we're here. We're making sure that people recognize that. That it's not just a decision to be made, it is when that decision is made as well. Think about death and mortality. You know, there was a time last year, this was almost the end of December, when I tell people, do not monitor infections. They're the wrong number. That's the wrong number to follow. Because like, the infections will only spook you. They will only scare you. This is what you have to follow. How many die from COVID? And if you're going to be looking at those numbers, is that something that we still need to be scared about? There are three pillars of our economy. The new pillars of strength. Number one, OFW remittances. Number two, BPOs. And number three, tourism. One and two remain to be strong throughout the pandemic. There was a time when they get, they get weakened. They were weakened at the start of 2020 when the pandemic struck. OFW remittances were down. People were assuming they're going to go down 20% because globally we're going to be exposed to a real contraction. So expectations nila, yung mga OFW, bababa ang sweldo. Yung mga OFW, hindi magpapadala ng mera. 20% negative. That's the projection for 2020. Do you know how much it ended up with? It's less than minus 1 in 2020. And in 2021, it's already growing not higher than 2020, but higher than 2019, which is pre-pandemic levels. BPOs also challenged in 2020, but began to grow in 2021. So I don't have heard. I'm not heard. It's the last leg, which is what? Tourism. But do you know, a few days ago, April 1, lifted the lahat the requirements, except for the vaccination. If you're a tourist, you're going to the Philippines, they look at your vaccination proof, that's it. We're not quarantine. So you will expect this to be a big mover for our tourism. And did you believe that people are gonna win? No, they're not gonna win. February, Sarato pa, 47,000 visitors were here. Almost 50-50, 45% would probably be public buyers, 55% were international tourists. And the truth is, 
we are in great shape as far as this third leg is concerned and it is acknowledged globally because the world tourism council is going to be holding its global summit here in the philippines on april 20. april 20 dito ba to mo so what is that that's an acknowledgement that we are in the process of flipping this pandemic and as we move into the endemic, people are going to be positioning well for the future. But as we think that, you know, falls well and ends well, this happens. Russia invades Ukraine. Geopolitically, we're not really part of this, right? We're very far from it. There is no alliance between us and any of the protagonists, but this will affect us. This will affect us in many ways. First, factors of production prices, especially oil, especially inputs for food manufacturing. And second, logistical nightmares. That is the impact of this, and quite frankly, they're going to be major. Russia is exporting 6.5 million barrels of oil a day. If it stops the tap in doing that, you've seen that when it hit $140 per barrel. It's now below 100 again. But there is no, no guarantee it's not going to come back. And even breach 140. There is a possibility. Wheat. 29% of wheat exports come from Ukraine and Russia. 20, one third of the global supply of wheat comes from those areas. Sunflower oil. Sino mga magaling na chef dito na nagluluto kung magkamit ng sunflower oil? Mag-cord na kayo. Because it's going to be so expensive, 75% come from them. That's the reason why, for the people who play the stock market, you know, food production stocks led by Monde have done that. Monde actually is trading at a price below IPO today because of all of these issues. Natural gas, 17%. Fertilizer, 17% of potash and 15% of nitrogenous fertilizers come from Russia. So it is a concern. And once you like project that, markets get moved by it. So when we were thinking about COVID getting late, you would see that trend line when we started the year. But after Russia announced that invasion, the sentiment changed. And this probably created a negative stir in the market. But again, as an investor, before we get to be emotionally involved with that, the lucky pussy sa marami, when it when in doubt, zoom out. When in doubt, zoom out. If you're going to be looking at something so short-term as this, you're just going to be caught with a quagmire of ins and outs and ups and downs. The key is to look at it on a longer term basis, 10 years probably. If we look at it 10 years, then our perspective changes. We're going to see two waves here. The wave, which is the secular long term trend, which is that? That broken down by COVID. This trap is COVID. Nataanos tayo because of COVID. But guess what? There is a new trend with that line, and it goes like this. And if the question is asked, what has a steeper curve, the first one or the second? Why? Because it has to go back to that long-term trend. It has to go back to that long-term trend, and it's going to be trying to catch up. And when that happens, and it gets to meet that, then we miss out on the opportunity. 
Windows of opportunities happen when there is a crisis. We saw that in 97, we saw that in 2008, we're seeing that again today. Unfortunately, people don't learn from history. People don't learn from history. History always has a hard lesson for people who fail to learn from history. We've seen this happen, and it's happening again. Flashback. Go back to 2011, 2012. Many of my friends are telling me, Sayam, I should have bought a condo unit. I should have bought a house and lot in 2008, 2009. But in 2012, 2013, what are the two S's you hear from the Filipino language in investing? Dalawa yan, very popular, dalawang S. Sayang, sana. Dalawa lang naman yan eh. But then again, fast forward 10 years, we have another chance now, but people forget. And in 2025, 2026, we're going to be having the same lingo. We will be having the same lingo, and papalit yung sayang and san. Let's pull in a little bit more and zoom in and make it five years. Isn't it very clear that despite the blast ones that we talk about, it's very clear that there is a new wave in the last two years. And that's the, you know, directed by the COVID virus. So what are the major concerns in 2022? If you're thinking investments, what, what are the major concerns? Number one, geopolitical situation. There are risks. Siyempre, issue pa din yung pag-escalate ng guerra. Sabi nila, pag nakita ng China, oh, nakaisa ang Russia, tayo na din. You know, they might do it in Taiwan, they might do it to Panatag show. That's a possibility. The risks are low, the possibilities are low, but they're there. We have to consider that. Number two, are we still going to grow even all that? Is our economy poised to grow? Because when your economy is poised to grow, no matter what the distractions are, investments are going to be moving in the same direction. No matter what the distractions are. So clearly, we have to establish, are we growing? Next is inflation. Inflation tells you the reality behind the purchases and the investment you should have made before. This is not the first time I'm doing it. I've been standing on this stage for a vida for the longest time. When we were trying to sell New Valley in 2010, 2011, how much was the price per square meter? How much was the price per square meter? You would have seen 9,000, 8,000 per square. How much is New Valley today? Approximately 30,000, maybe even 40 for the areas that are prime. So if I have a time machine and I can put you in that time machine and bring you back to 2008, 2009, would you have been invested? You would have, right? That same time machine is given to you today. Because in about five to six years, we're going to be experiencing the same thing. Inflation will have a way of impacting cost. If a bidder makes a condo today, it will never be able to surmount that big cost of cement, steel, glass. It's never going to be the same. They can build and plan a building today, which is exactly what they built and planned three years ago, and the cost will be different. And obviously, the price will be different as well. And we're seeing that happening here. Admit it or not, this concern reverberates in all of us, right? The national elections. Huh? Who's not worried about the elections? Who doesn't think that it's a consideration? How many of you think it's a consideration in making an investment today? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay, there are a lot of people who think it's a consideration. Right? In, in, in about a month, exactly a month from today, tapos na yan. 
Right? So, anong ibig sabihin? Naka-hedge yung decision mo in something that will happen in four months? Or can you look at how you get to position now, no matter what happens, at the tail end of it? Again, I will have to make this as a political as possible because I'm an investment professional. But I just have to be very, very objective. I just have to be very rational about this. And then, low probability, new COVID variants, that's an issue. They can come. But hopefully not. Hopefully not beyond the Omicron virus. So, if we're going to be looking at fundamentals, what is there to look at? GDP. Growth recovery to be sustained due to increased mobility. Without the mobility, we were still dealing with good consumption. Can you just imagine what happens when there is mobility? CPI, or the Consumer Price Index. Higher input, factors of production costs, and logistics costs due to supply chain bottlenecks as demand recovers. So inflation will be higher. Monetary policy to remain neutral. Now this is key. The U.S. has an inflation rate of over 10% today. And the Federal Exchange Reserve has actually admitted that it's behind the curve. And they're saying for eight straight meetings, they're going to be increasing the rates. The Philippines is still very neutral and supportive of growth. So we're going to be falling behind, which means we're going to be at risk when it comes to the dollar exchange rate. Baba ba ito? As we see it in 48, 49 before, it's going to be a sense at about 52 to a little below 54. What are the risks on a macroeconomic level? Fiscal position. Okay tayo ng 2022, probably hanggang 2023. But beyond that, our outlook is uncertain because of our debt position. We will have to look at the income side to make sure that we cover that. Federal Reserve rate hikes will exacerbate the peso dollar exchange rate. And as I said, low probability of the secondary Omicron surges, but high probability of that energy crisis. We are an importer of oil. We're not a producer. Unfortunately, our neighbor, Indonesia, is a producer. We are a major user of oil, and that's the reason why we are at risk here. And lastly, a nuclear crisis due to the war. That's low probability. So high probability is emerging on the energy crisis. And let me share with you a bit of a sensitivity analysis here. Oil is 11% of the consumer price index. 11%. And it's also a factor inside transportation. So you know that oil per se, because it's part of both oil and transportation, that has to be over 11%. 10% increase in oil adds 0.4% inflation. So it is an issue. 10% hike in oil lowers the GDP by 0.1. Fortunately, crude oil prices are now down about 20% of their peaks. But as I've said, let's analyze it moving forward. This is a regression. How much would be the pump price of gas if Brent goes up to 180? Okay, ARIMA means auto regressive integrated moving average. Okay, if, if that gets to get you into some mental constipation. Don't even think about how it's computed. Even I would not appreciate it. But I guess what we have to look at would be the implication. Ano ba ibig sabihin? Ang ibig sabihin ito, pag na 180 per barrel ng bread, pwede mo ang husan lang per liter ang gasolina. We're already at about 105. We hit that a little earlier. And that's the reason why we saw 70 to 80 per liter. So quite frankly, mobility is okay. People are getting braver to get out because of you know COVID right now. Pero makikita niyo wala pa rin traffic. 
It's not because people are still scared to go around. It's because of the gas price. Walang gasolinay. So, hindi na muna sila lalabas. Work from home again. Para mas matibig. But the thing is, it's, it's this impact that will get to lower mobility that will get to push us to probably squeeze in our growth trajectory. When we talk about expectations on inflation, as oil gets to be higher, we're looking at an inflation rate base case of 3.51 in 2022 and 2.67 in 2023. Still a lot better than the U.S., but still worrisome because we would have wanted that to be below 3%. That also tells you that anything major, a purchase, an investment that you're going to be making today will cost you differently in another year. That is going to be very, very clear with this. And the exchange rate is another issue. Remember, keep in mind that we're importing part of our factors of production. It's not just the oil. Even the cement is partially imported because of the raw materials that's in it. Glass is also imported. Stone is also imported. And if the exchange rate is going to be like this, factors of production will be more expensive. Ergo, investments, positioning in property, in you know, even high ticket purchases like cars will actually force us to pay higher for what we can get today if we elect to buy them next year. But this answers the question on economic growth. We are touted to head and be the lead of the pack for the ASEAN 5 this year and moving forward. The expectation is 7.3. The government target is 7.2 to about 8. So it's even on the low, low level. But that just tells you, even at that low level, if we hit that, we're already ahead of everyone else in the ASEAN 5. Then we discuss the elections. I will not avoid and simply brush this aside because I think all of you considers it to be a major function. This is a chart that shows you how the markets are one year before the election, 12 months, 6 months, 3 months, 1 month, and 12 months after the election. This gap is your D-day. 1 month, 3 months, 6 months, 12 months, and 2 after the election. What does this tell you? There are only a few negative bars, right? To start with, even lang yung negative bars. Karami yung blue. Sino ba yung presidente sa blue? That was Joseph Ejercito Estrada. Okay? And I'm not even saying it's on that path. Why? Because no matter how much blue or negative they would have been by 12 months after the election, even Era made a positive score. He erased those negatives and recovered to make it a positive 12 months after the election. This tells you that elections are good for the Philippine economy. Kung sino man ang kandidato, kung sino man ang panalo, the figures show how the country's economy fare better with elections because people spend money because there is volatility of cash during elections. But the thing is this, what percentage are we talking about? This is from President Fidel B. Ramos to President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Three months after the election, Average, 4.9. Six months, average, 12. 12 months, average, 26. I am not talking about whoever's going to win. I mean, look at this. That's a mix of colors, right? You have seen, you have seen yellow, you have seen red, there's even orange. But what does that tell you? Yes, Philippine elections are good for the Philippine economy. 
But I'm not even looking at personalities now. As an investment professional, I look at the factors to be concerned about. So again, I go beyond the personality and the characters here. What am I going to be looking at? And this is something that will happen in about four weeks. I will be looking at number one, real platform of government and the main priority of that administration. Mind you, no matter how the criticisms go that this guy is saying only motherhoods, you know, everyone's talking motherhood anyway. In the Philippine context, if you are campaigning, you cannot dwell too much in detail. Fine, because no one understands you. No one understands you. You'd rather dance and sing. That's what's going to get them in work. So the real platform of government and priorities, that is going to be laid out when somebody wins. And that's what I'm going to be looking for once somebody is installed as president. Number two, executive branch appointees. You cannot look at who's going to lead the legislature because they're going to be elected, right? They're going to be elected. The key is who's going to be the cabinet. Kasi yun ang appointed eh. Yung legislature, sila sila mag-e-elect ng sarili. But, I think you all know, they have a way of becoming aligned with the president. And I think, for most part, that's who we are as a country. Di ba? In fact, I'll tell you, President Duterte never had a congressman supporting him. Not one. Wala eh. Walang nag-support sa kanya kahit isang congressman. Right? PDP, the party that carried him to power, doesn't have a congressional candidate. Pero nung nanalo na, di ba naging PDP lahat? Di ba tayo eh? Mabilis yun! The, the paling bins are going to be all around. That's going to happen. So, critically, ang abangan natin sino yung nasa kapitan. And more importantly, who's going to be on the economic team? This economic team will define the kind of economic growth we're going to have, the kind of platform we're going to have in terms of our fundamentals. And let me, let me stress that point really well. You know, for the most part, everything that happened in this administration, lahat di problema, started with EJK, started with all the, you know, and statesman-like language and all that. Then the pandemic struck. We had a lot of problems. But I don't know if you agree with me. Napansin nyo ba yung economic team? Yung economic team, they did their job. Honestly, with all that's been said about this administration, the economic team stabilized the country. Dominguez, Jokno, and Carl Kendrick Chua did very well in maintaining a platform for our fundamentals. And it has remained strong despite everything that has happened. So when you think economy, when you think business, it was the other president. Sino yung magdadala? Let me just check if you really look at the numbers. Sino yung pinakamagandang growth kanina? Who's the president who had the most in terms of growth? Sino, sino? Aquino? No? It's actually in Ramos, right? Because when, when Ramos took power, it's not only a confidence vote for Filipinos, for Filipino investors. We had a confidence vote from global investors. But many people miss out on this. Who was his finance secretary? Natatandaan nyo? Who was the finance secretary of FDR? Ayan. Kasi puro tayo personality na sa presidente, di ba? Ang nakakalimutan natin, ang nagdadala ng group, finance secretary, that was Papi Diokampo. Papi Diokampo. And guess what? 
Bakili Ocampo was voted Finance Minister of the Year. Globally, Finance Minister of the Year. Kaya ganun yung numbers eh. Bakili Ocampo was voted Finance Minister of the Year for three straight years. 94, 95, 96, siya yung Finance Minister of the Year. Three years in a row. What happened? He ran for the Senate. Tinalo ng artista at basketball player. Three times finance minister of the year. You know, I remember, I don't know the guy personally, but for the first time, I really campaigned for someone. I took materials from his, you know, headquarters, and I really tried to tell friends to, you know. My problem is largely against all the economy. This whole thing about poverty, if we leave that, we're going to be better off as a country. There's so many problems you get to solve when people have a dignified life. So that's key. So I actually tried campaigning for the guy. The problem is that I'm not going to be able to do it. Or it's not going to Probably not even in the top 20. The next one was Pinoy, who's finance minister. Who's finance minister of Pinoy? Cesar Purisima. Alam niyo ba si Cesar Purisima ngayon? International companies, big companies, get him as director. Because of his astute and you know, real intellectual view in business. In fact, I might have to say, for those of you who don't know, Cesar Purisima is a member of the board of Ayala Land. There are only a few companies locally na pinili niya because he can choose global companies to sit in the board from. So, makikita niyo talagang ibang iba. So, I'd like to know who will be in that economic team. Sino magdadala? Also, GOCCs. Who's going to lead an organization like PhilHealth? Di ba, PhilHealth? We're moving into the implementation of the universal healthcare law. And the centerpiece of that is PhilHealth. And it's embroiled in the biggest scams in the country. Disclosure lang po, I was a director of PhilHealth. In 2019, I was a director for three months. After three months, I said too much of reputational risk. If you're not gonna play the game, get out of there. You know, if you're not gonna be part of it, you have to get out of it. So three board meetings, that's it, right? Who's going to lead all that? GSIS, SSS, all of these, you know, we have problems in the pension budget. Response to critical concerns, we're not yet over and done with COVID. What else will be there that will be critical concerns for the next president? And lastly, the economic agenda and business policy. Are we looking forward to an opening of our markets? Do we embrace foreign investments? How are we with incentives? You know, all of that will be spelled after somebody actually wins. This would be the projection of how things go. My apologies, I always use the Philippine Stock Exchange Index as the barometer for the sentiment of business people and corporate executives in this country. And for good reason. So the base case is about 8,600, the bull at 9,400, and the bear at 7,002. What does this tell you? At the lowest of the low, which is the bear projection, that's still higher than where we are today. So downside is fairly limited. This is what that means. And the downside being limited gives you a good track for 2022. So what do we have to be mindful for? Ano kailangan natin isipin? Yes, we're going to have economic growth. But we're going to be experiencing high levels of inflation. There would be higher interest rates, and there's going to be a weakening of the peso. Given all that, 
What's the best investment now? I think that's the answer. We're looking for our next best move. And the next best move is to be the correct move. Not just today, but well into the future. And there are going to be a few that fits the bill. If this would be what to expect, clearly, we're to be looking at property. But before we even get down to the financial and slash investment views about property, let's look at the emotional benefits first. Diba, hindi mo maaalis eh, yung fulfillment and enjoyment. If you're going to be using stocks, mutual funds, bonds, asa na ang fulfillment at enjoyment doon, di ba? Matitirahan mo ba yung stock certificate mo? Now, I have yet to see a father going home, showing his kids, you know, kids, hali ka, baka kayo, a picture tayo dito sa stock certificate natin. Most of the fun, most of the positive elements of experience are always emanating from family experiencing the home of their dreams. That's really very important. That's how I put it ahead. And then obviously, legacy for generations. Look at the old, look at all the rich families in the Philippines. Rare will you see a wealthy family without a base of real estate ownership. And I'm not just talking about the Philippines, I'm talking about globally. The most chance that, I mean, all the wealthy people in all their countries own real estate in the critical locations, the central business district of their particular countries. And here we have a chance to take a little piece of it and probably over time grow that. Because on top of what we have to do to combat inflation, to right growth, we have to think about it. What's our cash flow? What would be the appreciation? Even if you're going to be living in that house, you're not going to be getting rental because you're living there. You're going to be getting the appreciation. And mind you, because of the leverage that goes with it, you take on ownership before you pay for the whole thing. Do you know that this is not a luxury you have in other investments? That you can actually own something without paying for it 100%? That's why I hear this from a lot of stock brokers. Rex, no, I, I'd rather buy a real estate equity position than property. Because it goes up higher, right? Maybe in actual terms. But in real terms, it's totally different. Let's go back to that example that I did earlier. Low Valley at 8,000 per square going into like, let's say, 40,000 per square. Those guys living in Uvalde today haven't paid for their properties. At the balloon payment, they transferred the loan to the bank. So many of them would probably be what? 50%? 40% owners? So what does that mean? They paid 8,000 and they paid a little over 4,000 of that. And the value is now 40,000. That's 10x. The multiple of returns is there because of something called leverage. This is where you separate the rich and the poor. Because the real wealthy people use leverage to their advantage, to accumulate assets. And that's the reason why I'm really excited because I see a lot of young people here. Young people can take leverage very early in their life, but I'm so sure you're scared about it. You're scared about the commitment. But the thing is, as you set forth a part of your income and continuously contribute it to a property, you will get accustomed to it. So much so that even if this is fully paid up, you can actually add another property later. Because you can pay religiously. And guess what? For those of you who haven't done it yet, for those of you, my challenge, think about this. You haven't committed to an investment position. Think about it. The first time you began to earn money. 
You know, you're not. The first time you started earning money, project that to today. Magkano pera na duman sa kamay mo? Magkano na? Maybe ang clincher question is this, nasa na? Nasa na? Many of us earned money from the very first day we started working, we started going into business, up till today, marami na duman sa kamay mo, di ba? But if you did not earmark any piece of that, to take part in any investment, that money would have disappeared already. And that money would have been in anything that you have bought. Dining out, you know, traveling and all that. There's nothing wrong with those experiences. It's just that you cannot tell your child that you traveled when you were young. You have to be able to get them the best of their lives, affording them what they deserve, because of the investments you make. Doon sa mga kumita na, tapos walang naipundag, think about it. Asa na yung pera? Actually, nagmumulto na sila ngayon. <laughs> then into what we call paranormal activity. <laughs> mga pangyayari na hindi maipaliwanag sa pera mo. Then talaga naman eh, wala lang eh. Right? But for the guys who have set things up so that they are paying something, they own something today. And well into the future, that something is more expensive than when they began paying for it. That is key about this thing. I mean, it's natural appreciation and force appreciation. Ngayon nga, pati yung force appreciation, di pa rin natin, merong, ha? Merong interior decoration package you know, that sports appreciation, when you put yourself into a situation where you can design something, make it better, when you send it, there would be appreciation. And the fact that it's a tangible asset works well with the inflation because the replacement cost is the issue. Inflation will make that entire property more expensive today than it was yesterday. It is very clear that that is key. Again, leverage opportunity, and then sinasabi ng iba, baka maipit ako pag pera ko na sa real estate. No, banks will lend you money because you own property. In fact, a lot of people use their property to get refinancing, to buy more properties. As they get the rental from the earlier property, you know, ipang babayad at ipanguhulog nila dito. Now you have two. And in about four to five years, you can have three. And I have a good friend. You know, kahit paano nung asasabihin ko sa inyo? Kahit paano nakaipon na ako. I mean, I have friends here. They know that I put my money where my mouth is. I invest. And I make sure that I have something for the loved ones that will probably be grateful for the future. Pero akala ko okay na ako eh. Until I knew a certain person. In fact, I was just with him lunchtime today. Alam niyo ba kung ilan ang pinapaupahan niya na units? And we're talking just BGC at Makati. He doesn't go beyond BGC at Makati. He has 700 units to rent. Okay? So, comparison-wise, na kung magdumi ako na po sa kanya, hindi mo kami baluwala. Can you just imagine how much the cash flow is on a monthly basis? How much the cash flow is on a monthly basis? And you think it's problematic with the inflation? You know, as far as he's concerned, bring it on! Because the higher the inflation is, the more value he has with all of those properties. You cannot put up those same units, houses and lots and buildings all over again. But not all properties are the same. As we say, yes, it's nice to invest in a property, but whose property? You know, in many places, in many countries, we say location, location, location. Very unfortunately, in the Philippines, it's not the same. Because the right location today can be the wrong location tomorrow. And the wrong location today can be made right if the developer 
is a good commitment over it. You know, just 12 years ago, many people would have objected to nobody. Ang layo eh! Ang layo! Puro tubuhan! Puro putik! Can you say the same today? You cannot say the same today because Abida and Ayala land poured billions into that place. It might not have been the right location years ago, but it's the right location today. As some of its new projects today will become right locations in a few years. What's the commitment that drives strategic infrastructure? And then, at the tail end of it, is where the rubber meets the road. Brand strength gives you value over time. Track record. It's very important that you know that because hindi man natin pinoproject ng walang basis, di ba? How much will the appreciation be? Because let me tell you, there's a bit of premium pricing here. There's a little bit of premium pricing here. Kumuha ka ng property ng another developer, baka mas mura. Baka mas mura. Pero alam niyo, I'm an investment professional. Alam na alam ko to. Alam niyo, minsan yung mas mura. Lalo na gumura! Real investments are not measured by the time you make the investment. It gets measured by how much it is when you're about to exit. That's the important price. So value over time is an issue. And the track record is already there. So why take a risk at it? So clearly, when it comes to developers, I think I'm not going to be overdoing this. The biggest, most respected in the country is a developer that invited you today. And the brand at the forefront of it, you know, it has many brands, but one of the brands at the forefront of it is Avida. Secure, sensible. It, it's very clear that alam natin dapat it's not overly done. Tama lang. Value for money eh. Value for money. Kasi alam nyo, sa panahon ngayon, when inflation is so high, and you overdo something, it becomes wasteful. So it has to be well thought out. Amenities, kailangan tama. Kasi alam nyo ha, natatandaan ko to, Tess, I don't know if you remember this. In, in one of my talks in the past, somebody stood up and asked, hey, sir, wala kayo ng mga swimming pool na parang beach. Hindi ba yung may mga buhangin doon, may mga alon, ganyan. O di ba namamatay sila magbayad ng homeowners association juice mail. Somebody has to pay for that. Alam mo, maganda yun. Maganda sa brochure. But if the amenities not run out, only two things happen. Number one, great amenities that no one uses. And number two, amenities that you have to spend and no one's willing to spend. So ano nangyayari? Wala lamang tubig ang pool. That's key. Going to Nubali, I don't know if you... Notice that subdivision that would have been touted as the next Dubai. Di ba yung may lake doon? Nanandong ka sa bahay mo, katabi ka ng lake. Bantayan mo lang ang anak mo pag naglakad, baka malunod. Di ba? Asa na yung lake? Hanggang ngayon, wala kang tubig. Do you know that that village was launched earlier than Dubai? Earlier than Dubai. And you see where it is today. So clearly, Kailangan pag-usapan po natin, ano ba yan? Is that secure? Is that sure? And is that, is that sensible? Because I have to pay the right amount. I have to invest the right amount to make sure that my rate of return is going to be reasonable and positive. Higher than what I would have gotten in alternative investments. Always remember, value is more expensive than the price. Many people miss out on this. They always focus on the price. They miss out on value. Alam nyo, if price is more important than value, then all of us will be using PIN as our toothpaste. You think value. And if something is really important to you, you think brand value. And when you think brand value, it becomes value over time. The thing is that the irony about all this is what's mentioned in the next line. 
you find most value when many aren't looking. When all of us are going to be looking together, value won't be there. Because all of us will be driving the price higher. So the key is to be able to evaluate the value and get the value when no one else is looking. And when no one else is looking, you get a good deal. You still get the freebies. You still get the promotions because nobody is looking. When more and more people consider it, people change offers because they don't need to entice you to make a decision you want to make. And this I mentioned earlier, successful investing is not avoiding risk. It's about managing the risk. And it's a great time to be able to see this perspective today because I consider it to be a window. It is a window. And you are all here to consider and evaluate something which can be your next best move. And it can be the right move. Not just today, but well into the future. I hope I made sense with this presentation, ladies and gentlemen. I thank all of you for being here, you know, braving the risk and taking this as an invitation worth going for. And I thank all of you for your presence. Maraming maraming salamat po and God bless you all. valuable insights to always give us new and practical points to reflect on. So sir, um, I'm sure our audience had a lot of learnings from you and would like to learn further. So sir, I received some valuable questions from our audience and I'll proceed with the first one. Sir, what's your take on pandemic investors and did the life value increase during the pandemic? See, we, we've seen a lot of interest in land values. When, when the pandemic struck, there is always this foray into open areas, into you know places where you get the fresh air, distance yourself with neighbors and all that stuff. That's probably going to even escalate further because even as we see this pandemic simmering, there would be concerns for future pandemics, future issues like this. So there would be a an affinity towards land investments outside. However, as I say that, little by little, people will also think about going back to the city. Because essentially, real sustainability is all about density. In the end, we're also going to be looking at burning fossil fuels coming from the south or the north, getting into places of work. So key is to make sure that we probably need to have both. We have to have both. Para Close ka, you are still getting into sustainable lifestyles, not spending enough, but making sure you have quality of life. But you're affording your family a nicer place to stay, safer from all you know the exposures by having a house and lot outside the city. So the thrust like right now is probably going to be the same as it is in places like the US and Canada, where you have both. Okay, that's that's the answer I'm gonna have because quite frankly, I am of the you know same same ballgame. I mean, uh, people know I have a house in New Valley with you know it, it's open, it, it's very nice, it has all the fresh air. But quite frankly, if I'm working every day, I cannot you know really move and travel from there to to the city on a daily basis. So technically, I have a house to stay in. The metropolis as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. For the second question, what do you think are some of the locations outside of Metro Manila that are booming or developing locations that are good to invest your money in? Okay, there, there are a lot. You will have to look at several inputs here. The, the, the study came, the, the, the Leach and Associates came up with, right? says that there are about 248 kilometers of roads, bridges, rail, and even a subway that's going to be mainstream in Metro Manila in about five to six years. So if I were you, I'm going to check out 
ano yung dadaanan nun, saan yung, asan yung mga major, major areas. No? If you're going to see places within Metro Manila, marami. Within provinces, marami din. Right? So you're going to be looking at, I guess, the triangle that's very clear right now. For me, top of mind, pag tinatanong ako kasi ngayon, yung, yung Porak, eh, yung, yung Pampanga, that, that place in Alguera is, is quite a, a big, big plus because you have Clark, you have Subic, you have the Freeport area of Batahan. That's going to, you know, really explode in the future, especially as they're planning a bridge from Cavite going into Batahan to decongest Metro Manila. So when that happens, that's going to be a big move. Now, the thing about looking at growth centers is this. You have to look at what the developer is planning in that area. Yung hindi one time, yung hindi isolated construction of a project, it would be nice to look at the real locale, the real vicinity, what are they going to be doing in a certain place. So on top of strategic infrastructure, it is how the main developer is going to be changing the landscape of that, that particular environment. And we see this in, in many places. Now, for, for those that are looking at established, you know, may mga established areas na kasi, di ba? And I don't know, uh, medyo kukunti lang siguro kami dito, but uh, you know, there was a time when nostalgically, Rose Boulevard would be one of the best places to be in. And, and, and that can be a great place to be at again because of this whole urban renewal thing. That's again another bet that we can also you know, position, our, position ourselves with. So again, there are a lot of choices, but let me tell you, no one will be in a better position than the person who invited you today. You know, that person who invited you to this event would be in the best position to tell you all of the things that you ought to consider because they know you better. I always think this, different folks, different stories, right? I don't think there is a best property for everyone. There is a best property for you. It's just that somebody will have to know your priorities, somebody will have to know your lifestyle, somebody will have to know what's important to you. And based on that, they'll match you with the right property that will be sound, and will be best for you to consider. Sir, for the last question, what is your best advice for millennials who are planning to make their first real estate investment, but at the same time, they're thinking twice because of the pandemic? Okay. I can tell you this, you know, as, as a millennial, your number one advantage is your long run. Time will always be the best asset for a young person who is investing. And it's rare for you to make a mistake if you have a very long runway, as long as you make the right choices for investments. Because anything that is correct might be wrong in certain junctures of time, but over the long term, they will eventually pan out to be correct. The key to millennial investing is this. It's the choice of investment. Kasi, ang worry ko, let me tell you in all frankness my worry today. And this, I think you all know, we even have a video with two of my kids. In the new na, in YouTube, we have, um, you know, Rammer Financials, we talk. As a family, I have two kids. They're, they're big investors of Avida. So they, they share why they did that. And in our conversations, it's glaring that a lot of millennials have their own investment portfolios inverted. Why do I say inverted? Diba dapat, pag nag-investment ka and you build up a portfolio, it is to be very stable, you know? First of all, the security products become first. You have to have an emergency fund or else you're gonna get tight when something goes wrong. Then you have other stable investments, growth investments, and at the tail end of it, speculative investments. Dapat ganun eh, it's a triangle because the top should have been the smallest and the base should have been the largest, right? And you will have real estate because it's a very stable, strong, long-term position, you will have it at the lower part. 
Pero di ba yung mga millennials ngayon, inverted eh. Nauuna yung mga crypto, nauuna yung mga NFT. You know, I don't have anything against those. I position myself personally in some of them. But I have responsible asset allocation. That is a must. And for the millennials of today, because of their exposures to their digital world, they might be missing out on the sound parameters of investing. That's the reason why I tell a lot of people, walang mali dyan, pero are you investing the right amount per type of investment? Because at the tail end of the day, I want to ask you, what, your, what are your goals? Why are you investing this way? And maybe the kind of portfolio that's matched for those goals will be something else. A lot of people miss out on it because they start investing immediately. And you know what the driver is? Earnings. They think they can run after the yield. When you run after the yield and you don't invest for goals, you will always go astray. Because when you invest to make money, guess what? Risk gets thrown off the window. You know, problem. Inahabol mo yung kita. I invest to make more money. Nothing is more wrong than that. You invest to achieve financial goals. You have to drive yourself into what I call financial responsibility. It is a journey. And you have to take the right steps at the start so that you don't go astray. I hope I got to answer that question. Thank you so much. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I really enjoy this. Maraming maraming salamat po. I hope to see you again soon. So I'd like also to thank everyone for joining us this afternoon. Our property specialists are more than happy to help you with your queries and find the property that will fit your lifestyle. So thank you for joining us this afternoon again and make it more possible with Aviga. Finally pop the big question. Hit the new Barcada goals. Start my next great adventure. Host epic game nights. Invest in a brighter future. Moving to a place we can call our own. We're ready for what's next. In a space that's safe and brings us closer to our dreams. Where it is easy to restart our lives. That gives us security to go for what's next. Your next best move, Avida.